In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the least squares trend line. Now, the least squares trend line is also known as the line of best fit or the prediction line. And it's basically a straight line that best represents a set of bivariate data that you're able to plot on a graph. Now, bivariate data is just simply when observations are made on a set of two variables. Now, the least squares line or the trend line is used to find relations between those two variables where one variable will have to depend on the other. So this would mean that one variable would be a dependent variable and the other variable would be an independent variable. Now in order to create this trend line or this line of best fit, what we're then going to need is a slope and a y-intercept. So let's take a look at this example. A certain store located in Welland, Ontario wants to determine the effect of advertising on sales revenue. So the following data represents the sales revenue in thousands of dollars and the advertising expenditure in hundreds of dollars. So there's the data there. Find the least squares line for this application and use this equation to predict the sales revenue if the store was to use $350 in advertising expenditure. So the first thing that you have to understand is, yes, we have a set of bivariate data because there's two variables here, one being advertising and the other being sales revenue. However, we need to determine which one is dependent and which one is independent. Well, here it's suggested that your sales revenue would depend on your advertising. So your sales revenue would be your dependent variable and your advertising would be your independent variable. Now based on that information there, what you need to understand is that your dependent variable is generally known as the y variable for the least squares trend line and your independent variable is known as the x variable in the least squares trend line. Now also remember that the least squares trend line is made up of the slope and the y intercept and so the most general form of the least squares trend line is y equals m x plus b. So again, y refers to your dependent variable of sales revenue and x here refers to your independent variable of advertising. Now m here is your slope and b here is your y-intercept. So now we need to somehow create the slope and y-intercept based on this bivariate data here. So remember that the slope and y-intercept have the formulas given here. And I want you to now pause the video and create this least squares trend line here that I'm squaring off based on the information given and the formula for the slope and the y-intercept. Now before we go ahead and obtain the slope and y-intercept, we should definitely try to understand the data and what each of these formulas here represent. So for example, what is the sum from i equals 1 to n of y sub i? Well, here's our data here. Now our sample size is 5 because we have 5 sets of data. So for example, here's our first set. 1 and 1 and all of this means is that when this certain store allocated $100 in their advertising expenditure they obtained $1,000 in their sales revenue. Now remember that the sales revenue is in thousands of dollars and the advertising is in hundreds of dollars. And that's what's happening there. So for example in the second point here when this certain store used $200 in advertising expenditure, they then resulted with, again, $1,000 in sales revenue. So that's what the data is saying. Again, there's five in total data points, so your sample size here is five. So n is equal to five when using these formulas here and here. Now, what does it mean to obtain the sum from i equals 1 to n of, say, y sub i? Well, all this means is that the sum from i equals 1 to, now you know, 5, n is 5, of y sub i, all this means is you're summing the y variable. So you're summing it from the first point all the way to the fifth point of the y data points. So we were just going to sum 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 
and that would give me the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of y sub i. Now you're going to have to do that for the x variable as well, and you're also going to have to do the sum of the y variable squared and the sum of the x variable squared. Now there's a major difference between what I'm circling here and what I'm circling here. Now the first one, the one that's circled now, just means that you're summing the x squared variable. So you're basically taking every single individual x value and you're squaring it. Take the 2, square it, take the 3, square it, so on and so forth, and then you're going to add them up. That's what that first one represents. Now the second one, the one that I'm circling now, just means that you're going to sum all of your x values first. So sum all of these, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and then the result is what you square. So there's a major difference between those two sums there. Now the easiest way to do this is to create a table of values. So if you see down below, I've created a table of values for x and y. So again, x represents here your advertising expenditure and y represents your sales revenue. So I've put the data here down below. Now what you should do is create an x squared column as well as a y squared column because we need to sum those two up. So all this means is take every single individual x value and square them. So this would be 1 squared gives us 1, 2 squared gives us 4, and so on and so forth for the x variable. Now do the same for the y variable. So here we have a y of 1, 1 squared gives us 1, 1 squared again gives us 1, 2 squared is 4, then 4 again, then 16. Now the last thing that you want to do is create a column for x times y because we need that sum as well within your um, y-intercept and your slope. Here and here. In your slope it's right here, in your y-intercept it's right here. So we're going to create another column for x times y. x times y just means take your x value and multiply it by its corresponding y value. So 1 times 1 gives us 1. Then 2 times 1 gives us 2, 3 times 2, 6, 4 times 2, 8, 5 times 4, 20. Now to obtain your sums, all we have to do is add up these columns. So this first column here would be the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i. So i equals 1 to 5 of x sub i would be just add up this entire column. Now when you add up that entire column, you get 15. Now on the right hand side here for y, if you add this up you're going to get 10 and what that is is the sum from i equals 1 to n of y sub i. Now you're going to do the same for the x squared column, the y squared column and the xy column as well. So for x squared, we sum this up, it gives us the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i squared and this should sum up to 55 when you sum that column. This second column for y squared should sum to 26 and again that's just the sum from i equals 1 to n of y sub i squared and this last one here, the last column, should sum to 37 and that gives us the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i multiplied by your y sub i. So those are your five sums. Those are going to be used to substitute into your corresponding slope and y-intercept formula. For your slope, in the numerator, n is 5. Multiplied by the sum of the two variables multiplied would be 37. Minus the sum of your x's is 15. The sum of your y's is 10. So that's your numerator. Now your denominator works out to be n, which is 5, times the sum of your x values squared, so that would be the 55 value, minus, now the sum of your x values then squared. So the sum of your x values summed to 15, and then you want to square that value. So again, there's a major difference between this sum and this sum over here. Now let's evaluate the numerator and the denominator separately. Your numerator should evaluate to 35 and your denominator should evaluate to 50. 
Now this works out to an answer of 0 0.7, which again represents your slope. So here in the least squares trend line, your slope value is 0 0.7. Now all we need to do is obtain our y-intercept and we are done. So for the y-intercept in the numerator, the sum of your x values squared up would be 55 multiplied by the sum of your y variable, which is 10, minus the sum of your x variable, which is 15, multiplied by the sum of your x times your y column which is 37. Now this is all divided by the exact same denominator as your slope equation. So if you notice your slope equation and your y-intercept equation both have the exact same denominator and we've already evaluated that slope so we already know the denominator here is 50. So work out the numerator. The numerator here should work out to negative 5. Negative 5 divided by 50 gives us an answer of negative 0.1. So there you go, you've obtained your slope and your y-intercept, and so therefore your least squares trend line y is equal to an equation of 0 0.7 times x minus 0.1, because your b-value is negative. Now what does this actually mean, this least squares trend line? All it suggests is that you can now basically predict a sales revenue based on an advertising expenditure. Now you must be careful when using this line for a prediction. You can only predict within the domain of x values here. So they've only showed x values of 1 through 5, which means this least squares trend line is a prediction line only for the data values between 1 and 5 for x. Now you can't use this line to predict um, to predict an advertising expenditure of say $600 because the line didn't use $600, it only used 1 through $500. So for example, you could now predict a sales revenue based on say an advertising expenditure of $350 because $350 lies between your data points for x here. So for example, at an x value, so at an advertising expenditure of say $350, what would your sales revenue be? Well, you would use this prediction line to figure that out. Now, keep in mind that your advertising here is in hundreds of dollars. So here, this one, this two, and this three represent for example, $300. So this 350 should be written as 3.5 to use this data line. It needs to be in the same measurement. So we can predict your sales revenue, 0 0.7 times an X value of 3.5, which represents $350, minus now this works out to 2.35. So here this just suggests that when we use an advertising expenditure of $350, we result with a sales revenue of $2,350.